Today we're looking at some makeup mistakes that can really detract from your overall look. These are not based on products, but more techniques and principles in art. Once you pay attention to these details, I'm sure that your makeup is going to come out more beautifully and you'll be more satisfied. A lot of the things that interrupt beauty are actually more concept related versus product focused. So in this video, we're going to look at it from all different angles. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. The first makeup mistake is related to something as simple and fundamental as posture. Oftentimes when we're doing something like getting ready, we just orient our body in whatever way is comfortable and that means leaning into the mirror or like sitting crookedly on a chair with one leg up and kind of like leaned over. I highlight this especially when it comes to eyebrows. Doing your eyebrows without proper even posture is surefire going to get you an asymmetric brow result when you didn't even realize it. This is one specific makeup step that you really want to be sitting up right and evenly with your shoulders back and the best posture that you can do. Now, of course, you don't have to sit perfectly the whole time that you do your makeup because you might be uncomfortable doing that, but when it comes to placing products like your brow products, as well as placing concealer or blush, these are the key areas where you want to reframe your posture to be absolutely perfect and straight while you're doing these. And regardless of the makeup products that you use, regardless of the brands or the price point, this kind of detail is going to make a huge difference in the way that your makeup turns out. One of the core principles of beauty is symmetry and ensuring that you have great symmetry when you're applying your makeup not only feels like more elegant as you're applying it but of course makes it look more symmetrical which is awesome thumbs up the video if you're enjoying it so far from a theme of contrast art is makeup and makeup is an art of course now, when you're doing art on a physical person, a living being, if you will, things like dry skin happen. The interesting thing about makeup is we're always applying it to a living being, I think, I hope. And so, of course, we work with what we have. Sometimes we have dry skin. And just to say, well, just don't have dry skin, that's not going to work every single day of ever. But one thing you can do is make sure that you don't use a buffing motion to apply your products because this will kick up even dry skin that you didn't know you had. And when you use a buffing brush and then you layer powder over top, you kind of create a paper mache effect and you can see all of the little spots of dead skin. Now we're gonna talk about really getting a good result where you don't have this problem at all, but first I wanna talk about this because it's a great opportunity to look at contrast in art in terms of makeup. Now, dry skin and metallic makeup are a no-no. And this is specifically referencing the idea that contrast is typically quite beautiful in art. But when you're doing makeup on a living person, highlighting by contrasting metallic, beautiful, shiny makeup with dry, opposite skin is a real surefire way to make a mistake with your makeup. This is because whenever you create contrast, you draw a striking attention, a very eye-catching attention to both elements that are creating that contrast. So it's very important that both of the elements are healthy because even if your skin was a little dry, if you didn't create any contrast by doing like a matte soft makeup look, it wouldn't be as striking in the wrong way. So when you have dry skin, of course exfoliate, but also avoid shimmery makeup. This next mistake is using contouring products, whether they be creams or bronzers, to create shadows over facial swelling. Whether you have swelling below your jawline or in your cheeks, if you use a bunch of contour to create shadows, surely it does create an illusion, but certainly the atmosphere of your makeup outcome is more beautified if your canvas is depuffed. Using lymphatic drainage methods like facial massage or an ice pack under the chin and on the cheeks reduces facial puffiness and reveals the structure that's underneath. This next mistake is all about light reflection. A common mistake is having peach fuzz interrupt your makeup look. Something as microscopic and invisible in your bathroom like peach fuzz 
gets illuminated and very much highlighted with powder application and when you go out into the sunlight or into bright lighting the peach fuzz is really visible over top of your makeup since they're so invisible a lot of people overlook this detail but the best most glamorous makeup is going to really perfect the look by perfecting the canvas and removing this facial hair as a routine first step now I see a lot of salons offer this for $150, $200 for a dermaplaning facial using a single blade razor to remove the dead skin and peach fuzz, but this is something you can do at home so long as you do it properly. When you do this yourself, you only need to spend a couple of dollars on your razor, but the technique is important. If you'd like to see an at-home dermaplaning session or facial, then please give this video a thumbs up. Most important keys are that your skin is extremely clean, no, no, no makeup on it whatsoever, that the blade itself is clean, and your hands are clean, of course. Aftercare is also important because this can be irritating if you do it at the wrong time or if you do it over active acne marks. When you do this consistently and properly, your skin will glow with and without makeup. It is night and day the difference that it makes. And it can prevent you from being on the treadmill of trying to find a foundation that makes your skin look incredible because it just will. This next makeup mistake is interesting. It's compressing your eyes with eyeshadow when you have flat hair at the top, depending on the hairstyle you're wearing that day. Follow me here for the breakdown. Basically, when you apply eyeshadow that is deeper than your skin tone to your eyes, you're compressing the area by adding darkness to it. And when you have a flat head of hair at the top, you throw off the balance. And I think this is a good example, how it can look when the eyes are compressed and the top of the hair is flat. In this example, you can see the eyes are kept more open and soft with softer eyeshadow, which in contrast is much more balanced and beautifying as opposed to compressing the eyes and making them smaller with dark eyeshadow. Instead, when you wanna wear your eyes really dimensional and smoky, pair it with a voluminous hairstyle, get your rollers out, do a blow dry, something that has like an inch of volume at the top preserving the balance of your face. And this will make the eyeshadow an asset to your beauty and not something that detracts from your overall look. I hope that these makeup mistakes and solutions were helpful. Comment below and let me know what some of your makeup grievances are. And if I make another one of these, if you enjoy this one, I'll know what topics to cover next. I'll see you in my next video and don't forget to click my channel so that you can watch more. I love you. Bye.